Hi there, I'm Joel Bolt from Never Over Media. We're here at Wildwood Studios in Surrey, and this week we're comparing the Universal Audio Arrow to the Audient ID4. Let's do this. So this week underneath my tiny happy Christmas tree is the Audient ID4 and the Universal Audio Arrow. We're going to pit these two against each other. Now the Arrow retails for approximately 400 Great British Pounds and the ID4 retails for about 119. So you're probably wondering why we are comparing them. The reason is we're going to try and justify the extra 300 pounds. We're going to break this down into four categories. Specs, controls, features and sound quality. And if you want more information on the UA Arrow then follow the link in the description below or the iCard in the corner and it will take you to our review of the unit. The Audient ID4 is a 2 in 2 out bus powered USB interface using one Audient Class A mic pre on its single channel and one JFET quarter inch DI input for guitars, basses and keyboard. It also comes with two quarter inch line outs on the back and a dual headphone output. One of which with a quarter inch headphone output and one of which with a 3.5mm output. That means no more need for those pesky little adapters and you can use two pairs of headphones at once. Result. The unit is all metal construction and records at 24 bits, 96 kilohertz, and it's also completely plug and play. Doesn't need any extra drives to use. Nice one. By contrast, the UA Arrow is a dual channel, two in, four out Thunderbolt 3 bus powered unit using two unison mic preamps and one high Z line in. It also features two quarter inch line outs on the back, but only has a single headphone output. It also has an all aluminium chassis and records at 24 bit 192 kilohertz. At face value, the Arrow offers one more input, two more outputs and records at a higher resolution. However, the ID4 has fixed the annoying adapter problem and has a headphone jack that's actually a headphone jack. Now if you don't need the extra input then the ID4 wins on the headphone jack alone. However that lack of second mic input may be a deal breaker for many. For example if you want to record an acoustic guitar performing with a singer or in fact if you just want a second mic on your audio source. The ID4's controls are much less present than the Arrow's, with two independent gain knobs, one for the microphone, one for the DI, a 48 volt phantom power switch for the back, a monitor mix knob allowing you to blend between input and output sound, allowing for zero latency monitoring, a mute speaker button which mutes monitor output only, an ID button which enables scroll control but we'll get into that later, and a volume output control which when the ID and mute buttons are pressed together becomes a monitor pan control, which allows you to pan your input signals in your headphones out while recording for a cleaner stereo image. There is no pan bottom, the minus 10 decibel dB is hardwired into the line. The arrow's controls are much more in depth, with two independent gain controls hidden behind the preamp button which allows you to switch between channels 1 and 2, and you can also change the kind of input each channel is using the input button. It also comes with a shed load of preamp controls which are independent to each channel, those including a high pass filter, 48 volt phantom power, a minus 20 decibel pad, polarity inverse and a link between the two mic preamps on the top. Output controls allow you to switch between changing the monitor output and the headphone output by pressing the monitor button. When in monitor mode, pressing the dial in mutes the monitors and doesn't mute the headphones, the exact same as the ID4. So in terms of output controls, it's a draw between the ID4 and the Arrow, but with regards to inputs, if you need simple plug and play then the ID4 is the way to go. But if you need more control over your input signal then the Arrow is much more versatile, especially with its range of independent preamp controls. The ID4 comes with audience scroll control by hitting the ID button. With scroll, with scroll, with scroll, with scroll. Do you have any idea how hard it is to say scroll control in a northern accent? Seriously. With scroll, scroll control, scroll control. With scroll control enabled, the ID4 turns into a MIDI controller and allows you to mess with plug-in parameters and door host and much more. You can even scroll through your iTunes library. This makes it really useful for automation within your door. Wherever your mouse is pointing, you can adjust that parameter with scroll control as you'd like, which makes it perfect for automation editing. The UA Arrow includes the real-time Classics plugin bundle from Universal Audio Devices, which gives you plugins such as the 1176 SE Limiting Amp, Teletronics LA2A Leveling Amp, Mexi Mexi Marshall Plexi Classic plugin, Poltec EQP, and the UA610B preamp in EQ. So the ID4 takes this round since the Arrow's got absolutely no MIDI control whatsoever. And while neither has got a MIDI interface, the ID4's got scroll control, which is better than nothing, and it's a genuinely useful tool. The ID4 is also available in all black in case you need to record a funeral. Sound, sound quality, sound, sound quality. Quality. The sound quality is what really sets these two units apart. With regards to recording resolution, the Arrow records at 24 bit 192 kilohertz and the ID4 records at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. That means the ID4 is recording at half the resolution of the Arrow. So if this is a numbers game and you want the highest possible quality recording on the go, the Arrow will win hands down. But these are just numbers. This is what the Arrow sounds like recording. And 
And this is what the ID4 sounds like recording. To the average person, the sound quality doesn't make that big a difference, but to an audio engineer, that's a huge impact on which one you should pick. But the biggest difference by far is the preamps. Both the ID4 and the Arrow are using top tier mic preamps, however the Arrow is using UAD's Unison preamp, whereas the ID4 is using Audience Class A preamp, and these two sound very different to each other. For example, the Class A preamp is going to lose a little bit more high end than the Unison, and will also compress the overall signal a bit more, and we're not talking digital compression. We're talking analog compression. As a result, this is going to give you a more vintage sort of sound. Whereas the Unison preamp will preserve that high end and offer a more flawless signal, meaning there will be less analog artifacts in your recording. While the Unison preamp will retain that high end and offer a more flawless signal, meaning the audio you record will have less analog artifacts. You should really consider both of these options depending on what you want to achieve with your recording. The ID4 and the Arrow are two very similar but very different interfaces. If you want plug and play on the go with limited controls, a simple interface and you're not overly concerned about getting the highest quality audio possible then the ID4 is a solid piece of kit. It's simple, it's mobile, it's durable and it does a perfectly good job. However, if you need more control over your input signal with a less compressed high end and a higher recording resolution then the Arrow is ultimately the Vixer. However, the lack of MIDI interface on both of these devices is undeniable, especially considering at the same price bracket as the ID4. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 comes with MIDI input and output. And while the ID4 scroll control is a nice feature, it doesn't make up for the lack of MIDI input and output on either of these devices. So in conclusion, the ID4 has a lot of value for money and is a perfectly solid unit for the home recording enthusiast. The Arrow has many more controls and much more power behind it, making it perfect for the advanced user whose audio quality is imperative to them. So with regards to spending the extra £300 on the Arrow versus the ID4, the audio quality speaks for itself. If it's important to you, spend the extra money. If it isn't, then don't. And if you play synths and need a MIDI input, then neither of these are for you. I'm Joe Bolt for Never Ever Media. Come rehearse and record at our studios at Wildwood. Our social media and website links are all in the description below. And next time we're going to be showing you how to record yourself for under 20 pounds. Laters.